हेलो स्टूडेंट्स गुड मॉर्निंग टुडे वी विल स्टार्ट आर टॉपिक इन योर फाइनेंशियल मैनेजमेंट इट इज कॉल्ड कैपिटल एसेट्स एंड प्राइसिंग मॉडल टू कंटिन्यू फ्रॉम आवर लास्ट क्लास इन द लास्ट क्लास वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द टाइम वैल्यू ऑफ मनी अंडरनीथ वी डिस्कस्ड दैट फॉर द वेरियस फैक्टर्स विच आर इन्वॉल्व वाइल डिटरमाइनिंग द टाइम वैल्यू ऑफ मनी the factors what uh, we seen in our uh, last uh, class that was our factors of inflation next was our factors of uh, risk free premium and the last but not least that was the risk premium so these are the three factors involved while we determining the time value of money so today we will be discussing a very important topic uh, from your finance and management it is called capital assets pricing model or capm model what this basic uh, before before coming into this uh, model what i would like to say here is uh, in financial management we know that always we will talk about uh, there is a trade off between risk and return so here we will try to understand how the risk is measured under capm uh, model how the risk is uh, ascertained how the risk is assessed and based on which how we are actually det- determining how much expected return we are expecting from a particular investment what should be the adequate one and how, how how the risk plays an important factor here so in this model capital asset pricing model this model is provided by uh, mr william sape and john uh, lintner and jack uh, trainer these are the three persons who combined together they came together to establish this particular model under this model this model says if you'll we'll understand this model let's, let's first explain the what model they have given so under this model they are saying this is ke is equal to raf is equal to rf plus beta of rm minus rf so let's try to understand what are these factors in this model your ke represents the expected return from the investment the expected return from the investment rf what we have already discussed in our last class rf is like your uh, risk free return the risk free return denoted as rf in this model uh the new factor which is actually in this model is the beta factor the beta factor means it is a risk factor and we will explain in this model we'll try to understand how this beta is determined and what is the meaning of this beta this is a uh, denomination it is denoted as beta the factor of risk for time being you understand this much the factor of risk is denoted as the factor beta factor i will explain what the beta means and this part is rm minus rf this is rm means this is return from the market and rf is a risk premium or is a risk free return so return from the market minus this is risk free return so this total portion is known as risk premium as i explained in my last class that your risk premium is something what extra risk you are taking for a particular investment and you are expecting from you are expecting some return to supplement that kind of risk premium so this is what your risk premium is so in this entire model we will talk about the risk free return plus the risk premium this is the two part and this is factor of risk how to determine this so this is beta factor let me let me explain this uh, beta factor what is looking most important factor here because this is i already explained risk free return uh, so if those any anyone have missed it out i am just uh, explaining it again that risk free return is the that return the return what you are actually getting from a particular place by not taking any risk for example if you are investing in a zilt est security in a zilt est security or in some government bonds 
or in some government banks so it will provide you a certain amount of return and this risk free return i am not taking any risk i'm just putting that money into those particular uh, investments and uh, just expecting some return out of it so that return it's maybe uh, a return uh, without taking any risk i'm not taking any risk so this is a return for example uh, in our economy let's say bank is giving me a return of nine percent which is known as my risk free return i'm not taking any risk here the second part which is coming to my mind is that is called the risk factor which is in this model it says risk factor the risk factor is denoted as beta in this model these three gentlemen they actually suggested this particular model so they said beta they identified beta beta is nothing but beta is the factors of risk in a market the factors of risk in a market so before explaining beta i would like to explain you about something about a risk in financial management if you ask me about risk the risk is divided into two parts number one number one the part is systematic risk systematic risk the part number two is unsystematic risk this systematic risk is otherwise known as market risk market risk or this unsystematic risk is otherwise known as individual risk right so uh, risk is of two types one is your systematic risk another is your unsystematic risk your systematic risk is uh, also known as market risk and this unsystematic risk is also known as individual risk sometimes we may use the term unique risk also right okay so this systematic risk is also known as market risk this means what happened while i'm saying systematic risk this means if something some changes what is this means here the risk is risk of uncertainties the risk of something will change in the coming future which actually we unable to estimate we know but what will be the impact we don't know what will be the impact we don't know that is why we are making an estimation of risk that something will be changing in the near future for example if today you guys are preparing yourself for your examination and let's say you are having five units right and you are preparing for your final examinations so somebody told you that you just prepare 10 questions this means two questions from each unit or 10 questions from five units you prepare yourself for the examination and if you go to the exam and you will find maximum benefit out of it because uh, uh, five questions you have to attend in the examination and out of 10 five questions will be there so uh, if by considering this you are preparing yourself for the examinations let's now try to understand what kind of risks are involved in this and how it will be divided into two different type of risk one is systematic and another is unsystematic risk first understand the concept then i will take you through the market concepts for this under systematic risk let's try to understand what will be the systematic risk this means this is certain kind of risk this systematic risk is certain kind of risk which will be impacting for entire market for the entire market all the players those who are involved in the market those who are indulged in that particular market it will impacting everyone no one can escape out of this risk so in our example in our example if you are going to the examination hall by preparing just 10 questions 10 questions and two questions from two questions from each unit so what is the risk here number one risk number one risk 
which is a systematic this you because your sir has provided all these uh, 10 questions or probable 10 questions and you are preparing yourself for that now on dress in the examination there might be there might be a chance that what will happen this entire 10 entire 10 questions you are expecting five questions out of this 10 of your prepared questions there can be a risk that not a single questions will come out of this 10 maybe the questions what will be there in the examination something beyond this 10 questions something beyond this 10 questions so there are high probabilities that this questions might might come but there is also a probability is that uh, questions will not come any of the questions will not come from the 10 or maybe you will get some two to three questions two to three questions out of five another uh, two questions uh, you will not be getting out of this 10 so that is a kind of risk but this risk will be impacting all the persons all the persons all the candidates those who are appearing for the examination because it is equal for all if this is a risk this risk is equal for all so what is this individual risk individual risk or unsystematic risk this unsystematic risk says that it is the risk of the individual farm in the market it is the risk of the individual farm in the market it is farm specific it is nothing to do with the market market risk is separate this individual risk is separate coming back to our example for if you are getting all the 10 questions if you will get all the 10 questions that what your teacher has provided you as uh, suggested questions or maybe some probable questions what is the individual list let's say uh, 10 students 10 students are preparing the same pattern of questions this 10 quest this 10 questions individually what is my risk here is if same questions will be there in the examination what is the retention capacity of my mind how much actually i able to uh, recapitulate in the examination hall might be possible i am having an examination phobia so what will happen is my hands my uh, head my brain is not supporting me enough so that i even if i prepared myself well but i am not able to jotting it down everything in the examination hall in the examinations conditions or uh, what actually i gone through so this is an individual risk it is nothing to do with the systematic risk because this is okay questions uh, maybe 10 out of uh, sorry uh, i mean you know, three out of five questions were there in the from the selected questions uh, but those three questions what are uh, there in your uh, final paper final question paper might be you as an individual because you got nervous because two questions were not there from your uh, selected questions maybe this two to three questions what are already there so you got uh, you, you got uh, developed a sense of nervousness and you unable to write this examination so how you handle the pressure it is again one very important aspect so that is why here this is called individual risk this is nothing to do with the rest of the nine students it is your risk similarly while I'm talking about uh, in a business scenario in a business scenario what happens is in financial management we always talk about investment we always talk about expected return this means we are talking about a market the market means market is nothing but market is something is, is a combination of individual forms it's a combination of individual forms So in this individual farms, what happens is all the farms, all the farms are having certain exposure to the risk. Uh, I'll give you an example of systematic risk. Your systematic risk are like uh, economic risk, economic risk, let's say your political risk. Let's say your economy is in like let's say economic condition, economic is in boom situation, or economic maybe is a depression situation. 
depression situation whatever it may be because they are all economic factors so it's going to impact all your farms all your farms in the market equally everyone will be impacted to to, to this kind of risk maybe risk of inflation whatever is there uh, political risk maybe your political scenario will be changing your political scenario will be changing in the near future so it will be also impacting the entire market in a similar fashion but while i'm talking about the individual risk individual risk of the farm maybe this is the risk like uh, uh, that that farm is having certain changes in their policy changes in the policy or uh, some uh, strike strike between the management and the labor force so this is individual farm specific risks how much the farm maybe the farm is uh, suffering losses since last losses since last uh, two years maybe this year another chance of getting loss so these are all individual risk factors these individual risk factors will not be impacting your market but certain systematic risk this individual company this individual organizations is having some exposure to those systematic risk as well so understood up to this point what is systematic risk and what is unsystematic risk <coughs> here one more aspect is i would like to uh, introduce something called our risk factor which is risk of uncertainties risk of uncertainties underneath what i am saying is um, let's say i am having a farm the farm name is uh, a like your reliance industries reliance industries limited another farm another farm let's say the name is xyz limited fine and as i know this reliance limited is a very well stabled company very stabled industry reliance is doing well since last 5 or 10 years reliance is doing well and uh, if somebody will ask you dear friend please invest certain amount of money let's say you are having 1 lakh rupees invest that 1 lakh rupees in reliance industries and reliance will give you a return of 9% and whereas my market return i mean the risk free return is also 9% will you able to agree to invest at this rate in reliance industries the answer to the question is no because if you are investing certain amount in your government bonds government banks you are not taking any risk so you are having 9% interest then why you will invest in a private organization which will give you equally 9% equally 9% so you will not invest so you will say that while investing in a private organization it involves certain more risk it will involve certain more risk so if reliance will give me a 12% return then i am ready to invest otherwise not fine okay then reliance industry says okay bye done take this 12% and i am ready to give you 12% return uh, so give me 1 lakh rupees then what you did is you provided 1 lakh rupees to reliance industry limited now here was another company another company let's say it is company b or xyz limited now this xyz limited you don't know about the company much it is a very newly uh, established company and company has just started its initial years and uh, getting certain amount of uh, losses as well but company has uh, promised you that in near future company will do well and so please give me this uh, 1 lakh rupees and i'll also give you uh, 12% return so will you be agree to it the answer to the question is you will say no because 12% is very few amount considering that b limited i mean xyz limited this b company xyz limited is having higher amount of risk involved that is why 12% return is not sufficient to cater my risk premium to cater my risk premium 
So this x y z limited if it will be giving you a return of let's say 20% or 25% then only you will be able to uh, you will think of investing here because this is having high risk. Now the question is how you able to understand whether this 25% is adequate or this is your 12% is adequate what is the concept behind it how this particular thing is included in this CAPM model right so let's now understand that as you know a market is what market is just a combination of Market is just combination of individual firms. Let's say in a market we are having certain 30 companies, 30 companies, and all these companies having certain amount of risk. Certain amount of risk. Let's say it is what the change actually happening in the market. Let's say entire market is having a change in the market change in the market let's say 20 percent 20 percent changes in the market capitalization happened during last one year for example this is company number a let's say this is sbi this is company number two let's say Reliance industries limited this is uh, uh, data coming data uh, daily services or data communications limited or uh, this is uh, maybe another company let's say Baha your um, Birla groups Birla groups so these are certain kinds of companies are there right uh, so entire market changes happening here is let's say 20 percent let's say 20 percent so return from market if it is entire market if I'll invest in all the 30 companies in all the 30 companies what my what I'm expecting is a 20% return from the market because the entire market capitalization is changing by 20% entire market capitalization is changing by 20% and here one more important point the risk systematic risk the risk of market the system systematic risk the systematic risk of market is always denoted as a factor it is called one the factor is always one the market risk is denoted as this is called tan 45 degree tan theta tan 45 degree is denoted as one the market risk will always be a uh, remaining constant it is factor is determined as one and out of this one how much risk factor this SBI is taking let's say SBI is having 20% I mean 0.2 uh, Reliance Industries is having 0.5 right and your TCL is having let's say at uh, let's say it is a 0.1 and we are having this XYZ limited what was our second company it is having a risk factor of let's say 1.25 1.25 see now you can ask me question that you are saying market premium is one then how can this be 1.25 so let me say you this let's let me let me explain this that yes, this is 20 percent is for the entire market if i'm investing in all the 30 companies of the market then entire market is sitting by 20 percent that does not mean all individual firms, individual securities that are there in the market, everyone is shifting at the rate of 20%. No, some of them are shifting at the rate of 30%, some of them are shifting at the 5%. So it is an average of market is 20%. For example, inside a class, let's say my performance of my entire class last year, uh, they were doing well. So the performance, the percentage, the pass ratio was let's say 80% uh, last year or the average mark was 80 percent this time the average mark is let's say 85 percent entire class as a whole the shifting has happened by five percent 
but that doesn't mean each and individual student has got the escalation in the mark by 5 percent there are students they will be getting a high 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 marks as 20 percent there will be student they will be getting marks as five percent there will be certain students they will be getting lesser mark than the earlier semester so there is a lot of possibilities it's combinedly together it's 20 percent as a market so while i'm saying the market factor so in this risk factor what this beta factor uh, in capital asset pricing model they are talking about is they are saying that what is the proportionate change the proportionate change in the individual share or individual investment divided by proportionate change in the market proportionate change in the market fine so this is known as beta factor so this means to interpret it if the market is changes by one if entire market is changes by one so what is the contribution of reliance industries limited for that changes is one market changes one so how much percentage how much factor is reliance industries contributing to that <clears throat> so while i'm talking about the total risk the total risk the total risk factor is equal to our systematic risk this means the market risk plus our individual risk individual risk systematic risk plus individual risk so both the risk factors i have to add together to add together to understand the total risk factors so very very wisely in cpm model they have also included this factor of beta this beta factor says that it is nothing but the change in the individual uh, a return divided by into this proportionate change in the individual return with respect to change in the market for example here here let's say i am talking about uh 20 percent market is changes by 20 percent and your uh, reliance industries limited for example reliance industries limited having a beta factor of 0.45 0.45 right so how this 0.45 came anyone can say how this 0.45 came it is not given 0.45 is something like your market changes has happened for example your this 0.45 is came by uh, let's say my reliance industries is giving me a return of 9% return of 9% and market changes has happened by 20% market changes has happened by 20% reliance as individual company it has uh, uh, changes in its equity by 9% and market has changed by 20% so what is the percentage here is it is how much it is 0.45 only this means the changes in market has happened 20 and changes in individual reliance shares has happened 9. So this point 0.45. Let's say uh, another example what was our XYZ limited. In XYZ limited, for example, XYZ limited, the changes has happened, let's say, by 30%. 30%. And market has changed by 20%. So if we'll divide it, it will be 1.5. Sorry, 1.5 so beta factor will be 1.5 here the beta factor is 0 0.45 okay so while I am calculating the risk free return the risk free return risk free return has no risk then there will be beta factors there will be factors of uh, individual risk and the factors of market risk the factors of market risk which is a risk premium this is the systematic risk premium part what is the market is giving then i have to multiply this beta factor into it because out of the total market what is the percentage of this individual form okay so that is why our expected return is risk free return plus the risk factors of the individual form plus 
the risk factor of the market but here we have multiplied it because it's a proportionate change because you cannot do entire uh, single farm is not impacting the entire market in, a, in the entire market there has certain impact of that individual farm so that is why this individual farm factor has to be taken as a multiplied factor here so to understand this to understand this i'm just giving on a small example here to better understanding the concept Let's now catch up it. It is very very important to understand that this factor, the CAPM model, once we through with the time value of money, we are having the concept and the CAPM model concept, then we'll move further in our capital budgeting chapter in financial management, right? So let's now understand. I am giving one example. For example, so one more thing. In your examination questions, your beta factor of the individual farm will be given. It will be given in the questions. Fine. So one question so i'm giving one example suppose suppose the beta of reliance industries limited is 0.45 the beta of xyz limited is let's say 1.3 or 1.5 for example like this So 1.5 the risk free return RF factor the risk free return in that particular market is let's say 9% the risk free return in this particular market is 9% and the RM factor RM factor means what is the uh, market return the market return RM factor is let's say 20% right is let's say 20 percent so it is asking you with this it is asking you calculate calculate the expected return the expected return of reliance industries limited and xyz limited this means if this is a case and let's say you are having whatever money you are having let's say you are having one lakh rupees one lakh rupees with you so you have to this is a scenario in front of you now what actually in the financial management we know that in the financial management what we are doing is the financial manager you are the fund manager or the financial manager of a company so company will be giving you this much of uh, 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 scenario that uh, please ask us if I have to invest in Reliance Industries Limited, what should be my expected return? And if I have to invest in XYZ Limited, what should be the expected return? So that I can negotiate with them, please provide me this much of return so that I can invest in your farm, I can think of investing in your farm. So it is a very, very important aspect. So here we'll be using our uh, CAPM model, our capital asset pricing model to find out uh, what would be the expected return for Reliance Industries Limited and what would be the expected return for XYZ Limited with the help of a beta factor. So let's understand our formulas is our model provides us that our expected uh, return is risk free return. Risk free return, let's say first calculate it is for Reliance Industries Limited. It says risk free return. Risk free return in this question is providing us. 9% plus beta 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 factor of Reliance Industries Limited is 0 0.45 then my RM RM is 20% 20% minus risk free is 9% fine so this is 9% plus 0 0.45 of 20 minus 9 it's 11 percent so it will comes to 9 percent plus 0 0.45 of 11 percent in the calculation is like your uh, 4.95 percent 4.95 so it is 13.95 percent 
so you will ask to your management that if reliance industries will give me 13.95 percent of return then only i'll be investing i'll go for investing my one lakh rupees in reliance industries limited let's now understand this it says nine percent is my risk free return 0.45 it is the beta of that reliance industries limited this is the individual risk it is the individual risk of reliance industries limited and this is what market risk this is what my market risk and this is the risk premium because uh, what actually i am getting out of it is for market for investing in that market i will be get 20 percent and uh, what my what that market is actually giving me is 11 percent because market is giving me 20 percent and 9 percent is about risk free return so if if i will not be investing in, in in that particular market which is having certain amount of risk i will be getting nine percent return out of it so what that actually that market gives me 11 percent due to this risk premium so i have to find it out the risk premium now understand this 11 percent as i explained you that entire market risk factor i'll denote it as one so this market risk factor is one so 11 percent of market risk is for the factor of one then the beta factor the beta factor of market is one so while the beta factor of market is one so the market return is 11 percent so while the beta factor of this individual company is 0.45 so what much of risk what much of return actually i should expect out of that 11 percent because beta factor one then 11 percent is the return if beta factor is 0.45 then what is the return so the return will be 4.95 4.95% 4.95% and this is the 4.95% what I am charging for this risk part individual risk plus market risk part and risk free return is 9% that is why if 13.95% if reliance is ready to provide me then I will go with investing in reliance industries limited okay clear now second part the second part second part is our xyz limited so xyz limited how much it is saying uh, for xyz limited what is actually happening here is my risk free return again it is nine percent plus the beta factor of xyz limited what the beta factor is 1.5 into it used be 20 percent minus a risk free is nine percent so this is nine percent plus 1.5 1.5 of 11 percent So it is 9% plus 1.5 into 11, it is comes to uh, 16, I think so, 11, 11, 11, 5.5, uh, 16, 16.5. So this is 25.5%, 25.5%, yes. So now I came to know here if this XYZ limited which is carrying a beta factor of 1.5 this means the individual risk in XYZ limited is higher so that is why it is carrying a beta factor of 1.5 so in earlier case we came to know that for Reliance Industries if it will be uh, 14% maybe 13.95% I will go with it but for this XYZ limited which is having higher risk so I am expecting 25.5% if there is a return of 25.5% then only I will go for investing in that particular company. So with this we came to know that this risk and return the expected return how it is uh, depending upon the risk factor of individual firm that is what our capital asset pricing model is explaining is some few more numericals are there few more practical questions are there we'll take off all those practical questions in our coming classes 
then we will be able to uh, having a clear cut idea of rest if anything is happening here. Let me say you that these are the basic fundamentals of financial management based on which we will understand our uh, difficult topics like your uh, uh, capital budgeting planning and your cost of capital. So a lot of things will come across in the various in the coming near future. So please try to understand, please revise it, do it. If any doubt, please you can ask me with the queries. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Thanks a lot for hearing me uh, presentably. Thanks a lot.